When are we gonna see women in the uh, UFC, man? Never. 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 Fighting out of Venice, California. Please welcome the 2008 U.S. Olympic bronze medalist in judo, the undefeated challenger, Rowdy Ronda Rousey. The first ever UFC women's champion, Ronda Rousey. This entire crowd is on their feet for the arrival of the first ever UFC women's bantamweight champion, Rowdy Ronda Rousey. This is a gigantic cultural moment. This is not just a moment for Ronda Rousey. This is a, a moment for women's sports, period. She's so technically superior to everyone that she's facing. She's so superior as far as her confidence. She's so superior as far as her accomplishments. She continues to evolve as a mixed martial artist. What Ronda showed tonight is that she is a real champion. The greatest ones make really strong fighters look very normal. She's different than any fighter I've ever seen fight ever. She's just so unusual in so many ways and just so damn good. There's nothing I see in anybody else that I see them challenging her. I'm going to retire undefeated. From the moment Ronda Rousey burst onto the MMA scene, you knew there was something special about her. Ronda, or Honda if you speak Portuguese, was a second-generation judoka at the highest level with an undefeated MMA record of not only a 100% finishing rate. None of her fights lasted longer than a minute. When dolled up, she could be easy on the eyes. You're beautiful. You're clean up. You're a 10. Ah, shit. Here we go. It's bad enough that we have to listen to Joe talk about Ronda the way Troutman talked about Rambo. You're the best ever. Rambo was the best. Now we gotta listen to him overhype her looks as well. No, Joe. This is a 10. Don't give me that beauty is in the eye of the beholder bullshit either. Tell that to Shab. He'll agree with it. It's fun. It's the funnest. The rest of us can see for ourselves. Ronda's attractive for a fighter, but a perfect 10 she is not. Speaking of Schlob, he actually used to date Ronda. Who also hit it? Show of hands. Travis Brown? Anyone else? Me too. Oh shit, another member from the Slapahoe tribe. Those hands have seen a lot of action. I really don't think that's anybody's business. Fair enough, but I gotta ask. Why did things end with Shab? If you need the loom, not the dude. Oh, snap! Where was I? Oh yeah, I'm still listing off Rhonda's positive qualities. She was captivating in interviews, speaking eloquently while exuding confidence, being brash, showing off an intense presence, but it could also be flirtatious and fun. Are you calling me a tease? Yeah. Are you saying I'm rowdy? Yeah, baby! Hey, handsome. <laughs> Everything about her screamed it factor. However... There's a flip side to that coin. When a person achieves a certain magnitude of success, it occasionally comes at a price. Now, this isn't just my opinion because it's pretty well documented that Rhonda can be kind of a bitch. I'm a bitch. You see? I wouldn't lie. I'm sure I'll be misquoted on that one. She can also be arrogant. No amount of strategy and thought can beat me and I'm going to show them that. A drama queen. All that respect, all that everything, all you being sweet, I see right now that it's fake and you're going to get it on Sunday. Overly ambitious. I would love to have a chance to be the boxing world champion. A crybaby. I'm actually like a big crybaby. I cry all the time. And a sore loser. Let's face it, she deals with losing the same way vampires deal with sunlight. Burn! When a person was as polarizing as Rhonda, you had to know that any potential downfall would be monumental. Some of you think you've been through rough times like darkness is your ally. Darkness, everybody! You, you merely really adopted, adopted the, the dark. dark. Rhonda was, was born in it. Molded by it. it. She it didn't see the light until, until she was, was already a woman, and by then, nothing, nothing to her but blind. Blind. <coughs> <coughs> Rhonda was destined to do something great. That's what her dad always told her until he passed away when Rhonda was only eight years old. Achieving greatness was nothing new for her family. Rhonda's mom, Anne Maria DeMars, was the first American to win a gold medal at the World Judo Championships. Mrs. Miyagi would wake Rhonda and her sisters up in the morning making them drill arm bars. She ain't raising no do-nothing bitches. Not in her house. Anne Maria doesn't even wear a watch. She decides what time it is. 
I could go on and on about how awesome my mom was. She uh, was the first American to ever win the World Championships in Judo. She um, got a perfect score on the SATs at 16, graduated college at 19, and when she won the World Championships in Judo, she was working as an engineer, getting her PhD and a single mother all at the same time. She started her own consulting company from scratch, turned into a multi-million dollar business, and now her and my stepdad are making like an interactive 3D RPG game to teach kids math. Rhonda's actually being modest. On the seventh day, God rested and Rhonda's mom took over. She ties her shoes with her own feet, can dribble a bowling ball, has actually won playing tennis against the wall, and counted to infinity. Twice. Don't let the government fool you. Anne Maria was actually the Navy SEAL who killed Bin Laden. That happened. <laughs> Get it? Or do we need more examples of how amazingly badass Rhonda's mom is? When Chuck Norris goes to bed, he has nightmares about Anne Maria DeMars. Rhonda started competing as a swimmer before eventually following her mother's path into judo. Anne Maria knew there would be a lot for Rhonda to live up to, being her daughter. She would use her connections in the judo community, along with her own extensive knowledge, to get Rhonda the best training possible. Throughout her career, Rhonda would win multiple medals in Pan American Games and World Judo Championships, ending her judo career after winning the bronze medal at the 2008 Olympics. After that, Rhonda hit a low point not knowing how to make a living. She's been outspoken about how most Olympic athletes dedicate their entire lives but barely make any money after the journey ends. She worked three jobs as a cocktail waitress and a bartender to make ends meet. Rhonda felt completely lost. Until... Rhonda has stated publicly many times that she was inspired by Gina Carano. Gina was the first star in women's MMA, opening the door for Rousey so she could blaze right through it. Rhonda made her amateur debut in 2010, followed by her pro debut in 2011. By the end of that year, her combined record was 7-0 with all of her fights ending in less than a minute. When the UFC bought Strikeforce, there was a fair amount of uncertainty when it came to the future of women's MMA seeing that Dana White had publicly said they'd never fight in the UFC. But Ronda had other plans. We are joined now by the Strikeforce Bantamweight Champion, Misha Tate. Misha, how are you? Pretty good. So let me ask you this. Of course, we don't know what's going to happen next, but there is a lot of talk that it may be Ronda Rousey. Do you think that's fair? Fair, no. You know, I mean, when she starts beating girls that are ranked in the top 10 at uh, 135, you know, then maybe... Uh, we can start thinking about her getting a title shot at that weight. She said on our show last week, I don't think she's better than me in any category, talking about you and saying that she thought she would do best against you. Does she bother you, some of the things that she says? Uh, yeah, I mean, of course. She really, in my opinion, has yet to prove herself. She said that she's going to slap that title away from me like it's going to be that easy. She said that she doesn't want me to lose to Sarah Kaufman first. It's just going to be that much sweeter when I get the chance to uh, shove all those words back into her mouth. Have you ever met Rhonda? No, I've never met her. Well, I'll give you an opportunity to, to say hello to her. As you know, and I'm not trying to, this is not an ambush or anything. You knew this was uh, what we were trying to accomplish. Uh, we welcome in to the discussion, Rowdy Rhonda Rousey with uh, Misha Tate and myself. Uh, Rhonda, how are you? I'm doing great. We're actually we're shopping for Vegas right now. I just want to get your response, and we are joined by Misha at the same time. She's saying that it would probably be more fair if uh, Sarah Kaufman got the shot first and, and not a fan of some of the things that you've said. What do you have to say in response to all of that? I think one of her main complaints has been that I'm not ranked and I haven't earned my spot or whatever. But um, you know what? This is the USC. Their job is to put together the fights that the fans want to see the most, and that's going to make their events the most money. It's 100% that a fight between me and her needs to happen. It'll be great for women's MMA. It'll be the first, like, highly anticipated women's title fight in a very long time. Bickering dramatic women is a multi-billion dollar business. And if you make it look like the fights are somewhat personal, it's something they want to see. I mean, that's what the men are doing in, you know, on their side, and they're extremely successful with it. You could say, you know, you want to be the Chael Sonnen of women's MMA, and, you know, Chael gets a lot of press and everything like that, too. But, I mean, nobody likes him. Yeah, but he makes a lot of money, and he gets title shots now, doesn't he? He didn't before. He didn't always act like that. Did you notice that? Chill Sonnen wasn't always the way he is. He kind of created that character, and now he's, you know, hosting the World of May Awards, and he's getting multiple title shots. I mean, it's working. The fight between me and you for the title would get more outside, you know, attention from people that aren't already women's MMA fans. It's because you're pretty, and you have a mouth that you've been running. I'm not just pretty. I have actually have an Olympic medal, and I spent a lot of years putting a lot of effort into that. 
if you're saying that, like, skipping someone ahead to find a title is bad for women's MMA, I mean, look at Brock Lesnar. I'm trying to, like, have women accepted more for us as athletes. I want it to be more like the Olympics because I have a tremendous amount of respect for all those athletes. I want our sport well, of actually, MMA. You're saying oh, that, oh. that the Olympics is so you know respectable and credible, but every time you talk about me getting a title shot, you say it's only because of my looks, and you're not saying that my Olympic medal bears any kind of credibility. So why do you look over it when it applies to me, but when it applies to everybody else, oh, it's such a big deal. You have to hand it to Rhonda for dunking on Misha here. Every time Tate attempted to dismiss Rhonda's credibility for a title shot, Rhonda would hit her back with facts and used her own words against her. You can't blame Misha for wanting to avenge her loss to Kaufman, but unfortunately for her, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Rhonda understood the business and knew she brought something exceptional to the table. Life isn't fair, and she knew that she had all the ingredients to skip the line, plus had the skills to get the job done. The issue with Misha's argument was that she approached it from an idealist perspective, someone who wants to see the world how they'd like it to be, wanting the focus for female fighters to be on their athleticism and not their looks, while Rhonda came in as a realist, someone who has a more pragmatic view seeing things the way they really are. The reality is that the overwhelming majority of MMA fans are male, so the best thing to do is accept the nature of things. If male fans like you because they think you're cute, don't cry about it, embrace it. Rhonda understood that. Misha complaining about double standards will only hurt her in the end because you can't seek validation and expect to get it. Just like you can't demand respect, it must be earned. You never heard Luke Rockhold cry about his looks being the focus for female fans. In other words, stop being a whiny broad. Her cries for equality also fell on deaf ears when she's been known to play that card when it's convenient for her. She cares more about herself than she does about the sport of women's MMA. And, um, you know, I, I think that what she's done has all been about her and marketing herself. Well, yes and no, Misha. You see, like every single fighter in the history of combat sports, Ronda wanted to attract viewers. By doing so, she simultaneously elevated herself as well as women's MMA. Those two things aren't mutually exclusive, you dits. It's not like she chose to do one but not the other. If not for Ronda, the sport of women's MMA that you're so passionate about wouldn't have been acquired by the UFC. To be fair, I don't think Misha was thinking straight here. Her hatred for Ronda must have temporarily blinded her from thinking rationally. One day she's like, oh yeah, I totally respect your Olympic medal. And another day she's like, oh yeah, it's not a legitimate medal. Or like one day she's like, oh, she's only getting the title shot because she's pretty. But then at the same time, she's got a picture of herself in booty shorts on her page. And then several months later, she changes her mind and says, oh no, it's an entertainment business. So I don't have much respect for the inconsistency of her attitude. It seems to kind of reflect that she has a little bit of a weak personality. This bitch is not going to beat me. The stage was set. Now the only question was, could Ronda live up to the hype? She's gonna break it. Oh, oh, it's over. Rousey oh, has done it. Oh, hell no. Fights. Five yeah. first round hard bar submissions. <laughs> Ronda Rousey is the new strike force women's bantamweight champion. Look at me, pal. I gotta live with her. Do you think your life will change now? You know, we saw what happened after the first big women's fight, and we haven't seen Gina back. Do you think you're going to get a lot of offers? People try to take you away from MMA. Or are you here to stay? A lot of people are worried about this. I'm here to stay. Don't worry about it. You know, I got a belt now, and I, I need to defend it. It's my job. Do you almost feel like you saved women's MMA here tonight because of this performance, doing it on this stage? I think I did something very positive for it, you know, and I think there are a lot of girls doing very positive things for it. And, you know, I don't think anyone does this single-handedly, but I think this is a big deal. At least for me. Ronda Rousey versus Sarah Kaufman would headline one of the last Strike Force events. Despite Kaufman being a former champion trying to recapture the belt, all eyes were on Rousey. It was still up in the air on whether or not women's MMA would come to the UFC. Ronda already got Dana's attention, but he wanted to make sure that she wasn't just a one hit wonder. It's pretty obvious that if Kaufman would have won, Dana wouldn't have brought the women over. At least not at that time. Can you blame him? Sarah Kaufman couldn't draw flies and would be fan repellent if she ever headlined a UFC event. At least she can beat the sun in a staring contest. I really think that the fight between Misha and I is an exciting fight, and I think that it could be marketed in a very, very exciting way as well. Are you at all concerned that you will have to wait uh, and maybe have to fight someone else while Ronda fights Misha Tate next for the title? I think that would be a huge mistake. 
it would be way smarter marketing to have her work her way up. And if she runs through people, which I don't think she will, then I'll be happy to beat her face in as well. Like, you know, she wants to be pretty. She won't be as pretty after our fight. Have you been impressed with what Rhonda has done thus far? Seven wins in her pro and amateur career, all of them via armbar, all of them in a, in a matter of seconds. Well, clearly she's really good at what she does, which is running straight forward, closing her eyes, trying to grab on and go for a takedown. She's great at that, but she's fighting people who don't know how to deal with that. And that just shows the level of competition she's fighting. You know, she comes into someone like me or someone else who actually knows how to defend um, a takedown. You know, it's not going to be an easy fight, and she's going to be getting hit hard in the face. It's going to be a fight. It's not going to be a cakewalk. Oh, really, dude? <laughs> Luckily for everyone else involved, Rhonda got that nitty bitch out of there in just 54 seconds. Perhaps she should have worked harder on that armbar defense instead of whining about getting passed over for a title shot. After weeks of dancing on Kaufman's grave, Dana revealed that Ronda Rousey was the new UFC women's bantamweight champion, adding Trailblazer and Pioneer to her list of accolades. I'm going to make it official right now. The first ever UFC women's champion, Ronda Rousey. And I'm presenting her with her belt. Consumed by the essence of estrogen, as well as being high on coke, Cocaine isn't cheap. Dana wanted to expand MMA's audience in celebration for Ronda's arrival. He temporarily softened up and decided to go woke, wanting to appease those type of fans knowing that they'd accept anything without question. He asked Uriah Faber to momentarily identify as a woman and change their name to Liz Carmouche, hoping this would help Ronda become even more of a crossover star. Despite the boost in testosterone and a severe neck crank similar to one other champs have tapped out to, Ronda pulled off yet another win by first round armbar. After surviving a minor heart attack, Dana wrapped the belt around his new star. Roughly two months after Ronda made her UFC debut, Misha Tate vs. Kat Zingano fought for the number one contender position and also for the chance to coach against Ronda on the next season of The Ultimate Fighter. It was a back and forth fight which Kat ended up winning. However, Kat suffered a severe knee injury which required surgery. Luckily for Misha, this gave her the opportunity to take Kat's position and fight for the UFC title. Their season of tough was a turning point for how many fans viewed Ronda. People's ugly sides tend to come out when they are forced to be around others they cannot stand for long periods of time. Some handled this better than others, and that's what the perception was with Misha. Neither one of them wanted to be around each other, but Tate took it in stride while Rhonda constantly came off as a raging PMS bitch monster. A real thundercunt. To the point where Rhonda was well aware of how she came off. Absolutely dreading and appearing visibly uncomfortable at the show's premiere. Needing Dana to chaperone and intercept questions from the media. <laughs> oh, she's in a mood today, boys and girls. You're maybe worried about how it's going to come out, but at the same time, shouldn't you, both of you guys be psyched to own who you are? And, and you know, regardless of your emotional level or whatever, you know, you're still a great fighter and, and wouldn't both of you guys be psyched to, to show that element off and not, not worry about, you know, the other stuff? You know what? I don't want to talk for her or answer for her, but she can answer for herself. But you have to understand, it's one thing to do an interview for a fight. It, it's totally different than opening yourself up and living on camera for five or six weeks. You know, when you're caught up in the moment, you do things and you just reflect and think back on them. You're like, Jesus Christ, this is going to be on TV in front of the whole world. And it starts to freak you out. It's absolutely normal. How could people possibly know who you are from a couple clips of a video that people are seeing out of context? It's no way for anyone to get to know you. And so I'm just preparing for people to get a worse idea of who I am. Before Ron had fought me, she was still relatively unknown at the time. And after she beat me, then she kind of, I felt like, used me as a springboard to really launch herself into that next level. And then opportunities really started opening up for women's MMA because our fight together, both of us, uh, was able to get the attention of Dana White and Lorenzo. And they watched that fight and they said, whoa, like these women can fight. I think we want to do something with this. Liar! Notice how Misha desperately kept reiterating the fictitious narrative that it was Rhonda and her that got women into the UFC? Not to take anything away from Misha, but this simply wasn't true. Misha happened to be champion during Rhonda's rise. Despite the marketing for the Battle of the Beauties and their title fight, it was all based on Rousey's hype. Misha was simply a pawn in Rhonda's game, a byproduct of her success. 
Dana has stated publicly countless times that Ronda and Ronda alone was the sole reason why he brought women into the UFC. Ronda is the one who launched this whole thing. I, I wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for Ronda. He's never once said it was Ronda versus Misha's fight specifically. Misha acts like it was this amazing fight when the only thing amazing about it was her not tapping sooner than she did. The decision to bring women over hadn't even been made until after Ronda's fight with Sarah Kaufman, which Misha had no part in. The truth is that Misha had a rough time coming to grips with the reality that Ronda made it happen. Misha had already been champ and Dana showed zero interest. The sale of Strikeforce did come at an opportune time, but that was happening with or without the acquisition of women's MMA. I think she has some jealousy issues and whatnot. Okay, really? Who's Ronda Joseph? You? Based on the evidence in this next clip, it appears to be the opposite. They kind of made it the Ronda show for a little while, you know, really promoting her in every single which way and direction. I'm not going to lie, it sucked. It sucked bad. And I was hateful and angry and bitter about it. It was ruining my love for the sport. Every time I would see her face on a magazine cover, I was filled with jealousy and resentment. And I've been working for this for so long. It's so hard. And, you know, the doors just happened to open the timing of it for her. Nisha was already the champ. She had all the tools that I had that didn't do anything with it. Rhonda was right here. Tate had already been champ and didn't do anything to get the ball rolling. Misha acts like she lost her title just as the wave of women's MMA was coming, but that's not how it happened. Ronda was that wave, and her beating Misha and everyone else the way that she did is what created it. Tate's revisionist history seems to be her way of coping. To Misha's credit, she lasted much longer than she did the first time, and longer than anyone else had with Rousey, but the result would be the same. Tate couldn't stop Ronda's armbar. Oh no, she didn't! He's just kid a little fucking manners. Ronda's next opponent would not only be undefeated in MMA, but a fellow Olympian as well. Sarah McMahon was the first American woman to receive a silver medal in Olympic wrestling. This is the first time that an opponent of Ronda's has matched her credentials. World-class judo versus world-class wrestling? An intriguing matchup to say the least. Unfortunately, we never got to see those two styles mesh. After a few exchanges, Ronda would clinch Sarah against the cage, landing several knees to the body until one eventually made her crumble, ending the fight in just 66 seconds. Oh, I shit on myself. Some thought the stoppage was a bit premature. Sarah said in her post-fight interview that she should have gotten back to her feet quicker. In her defense, it appeared to be a liver shot, so it was out of her hands because her body would have temporarily shut down. I'm not going to blame a referee for something that I feel like I should be able to control. I should get up quicker, and, you know, if you want to win fights, you, gotta, you just have to do it regardless of what's going on. Ronda's next victim would be Alexis Davis. I'm not even going to sugarcoat this one. It's not that Alexis was a bad fighter. She had a decent record, was legitimately ranked in the top five, and was the next girl in line. The selling point was that she was a BJJ black belt, so I guess it would have been interesting to see if Ronda could armbar her as well. Sadly for Davis, she'd never get that chance. Ronda laid her out with an overhand right and then proceeded to toss her carcass to the mat, ending what was left of her with strikes. Ronda's been virtually unbeatable. What's the biggest hole in her game, in your opinion? Me. <laughs> you are her kryptonite. Yeah, I, I, I just know that I have everything it takes to go out there and be champion. While Ronda was racking up wins, there was another undefeated fighter that people forgot about. Kat Singano had earned her title shot, but was sidelined because of the knee injury. Upon her return, the UFC wanted to see if she was still worthy. They matched her up with Amanda Nunes before she was Amanda Nunes. At the time, Amanda was a good fighter, but she hadn't reached the pinnacle that she would later achieve. After surviving an early ass whooping, Kat would make an astonishing comeback finishing the fight by TKO. The title shot was hers once again. Many believed that Kat would be Ronda's toughest test. This fight will go wherever I want it to go, and when it does, I'll do what I want. Here we go! Wow, right what? down! It is all taps. over! Oh Just my God. like that! Oh my God. Wow! Oh my God. That is way under a minute. Wow. Done. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's crazy. <laughs> she got so aggressive. She left her arm out there. <laughs> and you just can't do that with Ronda Rousey. Man. In what was perceived to be her toughest test going in, Ronda ended up breaking the record for fastest finish in a UFC title fight. 14 seconds is all it took. She's really good. That wouldn't happen again. Get the fuck out of here.
In recent years, Ronda had become a star that truly transcended the sport. Her lightning fast finishes had gone viral, seeing as that you could watch the entire fight in just a small clip. She had done many TV appearances, co-starred in mainstream movies, and was on numerous magazine covers, including SI's body pain issue. Oh shit, here we go. What round they rise and find that say? We've got titties. Alright. She's got her boobies. Man. I got a surprise for you. Oh! I'm coming! Oh, oh, oh. Why'd you take your pants off? My balls was hot. She was a whore. To me, she's beautiful. Oh, they shake them titties, you know, little dance like this with them titties, you know. I said, like, be happy you got titties. With Rousey's busy schedule, there was some concern that her focus may be taken away from fighting. Fortunately for her, there was a new motivating factor. Beth Correa. Betch Correa. You remember her, that Javier Bourdain looking bitch. Betch was also an undefeated fighter, but hadn't beaten anyone ranked. Nonetheless, she got Ronda's attention by beating two of her teammates known as the Four Horsewomen. Betch would add fuel to the fire by holding up four fingers and counting them down to the appropriate number left, ending with Ronda as the final boss. The strategy worked. Betch was gifted the title shot because Ronda wanted to make an example out of her on her own turf, facing her in Brazil. Leading into the fight, many of the things that Betch said about Ronda came off very delusional and inaccurate, arguing that Ronda's hype was generated by the media like her dominant reign as champion with record-breaking wins wasn't warranted, or referring to her as a one-trick pony. That insult would have had merit if she would have said it years earlier. Yet, two of Ronda's last three wins were by knockout. By definition, that is not a one-trick pony. Hell, Betch herself only had two TKO wins in nine fights, but fancies herself as this devastating striker. In reality, she was a dud of a decision machine. It's not just that Betch wasn't a finisher. She fought like a barroom brawler and didn't possess the one-shot power that Ronda had shown. And will show again. The trash talk didn't stop there. Betch would also mention how she wanted to punch Ronda's mole off her face. I'm actually surprised that it took this long for one of Ronda's opponents to bring up her mole. There's a bloody mole winking me in the face! I'm gonna cut it up and make some guacamole! Then there was the other comment. I have to be careful using certain words regarding this topic on YouTube. It's specifying where Betch essentially said in an interview that she hopes Ronda doesn't end things for herself after she beats her. Ronda's one of the biggest stars ever in MMA. It's common knowledge that Rhonda's dad ended things after a slutting accident left him paralyzed. This obviously didn't set well with Rhonda. Betch took a lot of heat once this came out and immediately backpedaled, claiming she didn't know, but nobody was buying it. So as soon as I woke up, there was a tweet from Rhonda herself talking about it, and right away I replied to her saying it was a misunderstanding. I don't buy it at all. There's no way that she could know all those more obscure things about my life and not know about one of the most significant events that have ever happened in my life. Furthermore, the lead-up to this fight was also where Rhonda gave the infamous speech that Beyonce would later use in one of her concerts. Just because my body was developed for a purpose other than fucking millionaires doesn't mean it's masculine. I think it's femininely badass as fuck because there's not a single muscle on my body that isn't for a purpose because I'm not a do-nothing bitch. I've never seen her trade punches. I don't think she knows what it's like to get punched in the face. I know what it's like, so she knows she's not going to be able to finish me, so I'll finish her. You don't know what you're talking about, do you? Here we go! Hey, it's all over! Just like that! Yeah. Oh my goodness! Again! Oh my goodness! Whoa! Oh my goodness! Wow! She's unbelievable! Wow! Whoa! Crazy! Oh my goodness! She can't really say anything about my hands anymore, huh? That young lady is the greatest in the world, and we haven't found a close second yet.
I'll go home and get your fucking shine box. <laughs> I'm speechless. She is just spectacular. She is better than she's ever been before, and she was already the best. You should admit your situation. There will be more dignity in it. After the fight, the Brazilian crowd cheered the opposing fighter like the Russians cheered for Balboa at the end of Rocky IV, manifesting nothing but shame for Biatch Cohea. No Country for Ugly Betch decided to climb up to the rafters of the HSBC arena and proceeded to do a Jeff Hardy swan tom bomb all the way to the floor. I'm playing, that didn't happen. It should have though. If Betch had any pride whatsoever, she should have ended things like a samurai does after a defeat. Especially since the fight played out the exact opposite of how she envisioned it would. You talked all that shit and went out like that? Keep that same energy, Betch, eh? Make the pain go away. She already seems like someone who grew up in a home that was built on top of a graveyard. It seemed like after the stoppage, you turned around and said something to Betch. If so, what did you say? I said the exact same thing she was saying to me at the weigh-ins. I turned around to her after I knocked her out and I said, don't cry. I'm not going to have to think about her ever again after this day. I'm sure she'll have to think about me plenty. We've got quite a large pay dispute happening with our Australian women's soccer team at the moment. Is it frustrating for you as someone who's so prominent in your sport that that sort of thing is still going on? I think that how much you get paid should have something to do with how much money you bring in. I'm the highest paid fighter, not because Dana and Lorenzo wanted to do something nice for the ladies. They do it because I bring in the highest numbers. They do it because I make them the most money. You go, girl. Rhonda put Amelia Airhead in her place. I don't watch soccer, but I'm willing to bet everything that the women's team doesn't bring anywhere near the revenue that the men's team does. The issue with feminists like this reporter is that they conveniently ignore certain facts to cater to their weak stance on things claiming that they want equality when the truth is that many of them actually want special privilege because they've been programmed to believe that's what men have had. So they rally for women to get paid what men do despite their inferior product not generating the same interest. Back to the kitchen, toots. They don't say men's bantamweight division, why do they have to say women's? And it's the first sport in the world to completely eradicate the separation. I'm the UFC bantamweight champion. <laughs> I'm not the UFC women's bantamweight champion because the guys aren't the, the UFC men's bantamweight champion, so they totally got rid of it. This is pure feminist bullshit. I get what Ronda was trying to accomplish here, but her goal was misplaced. If Ronda was the true bantamweight champion, then what the hell was TJ Dillashaw? The reason that men don't need clarification is because the best 135-pound fighter in the world is and always will be a man. Anyone who says that's misogynist is a brainwashed simpleton who knows nothing about science, genetics, or history of athletics. The fact remains that Ronda was the women's champion because if she were to have fought a man, she would have gotten smoked. Anyone who tries to cop out by saying that's just an opinion, I'll school you with an example. Despite what some say about Clarissa Shields, Lucia Riker was the actual female boxing goat and her numbers back that up. She was undefeated in boxing and kickboxing. Then she fought a man. A mediocre one that was also her size. She couldn't even last two rounds. I could go on and on with other examples. Do you see the UFC gradually like moving towards all female fight cards? No, I don't see why they would do an all female tough card, or you know, I, I don't see why they would do an all guys card unless they don't have enough girls. You know, I think that mixing everybody is the the right way to do it. Nothing worse than a male feminist. I bet he enjoys sitting in safe spaces filled with purple-haired fatties who still won't give him any play. I'm scared to death of failure, and I'm so scared to lose I'm way more than any of these other girls. It's the kind of thing that it keeps me up at night. Rhonda had reached the pinnacle of her career. She had movies being released, won an ESPY award for Best Female Athlete of the Year, and her do-nothing bitch catchphrase was trending. Rousey was pissing excellence everywhere she went. The UFC wanted to capitalize on this by having her next fight in Docklands Stadium in Melbourne, Australia. The only thing left to figure out was who the next opponent was going to be. Misha Tate was considered to be an option, but the issue was that she already had two opportunities against Rousey and fans might not be interested in a third fight. They decided to go with Holly Holm, a former boxing world champion who crossed over into MMA. Not unlike Ronda's other recent opponents, Holly also had an undefeated record. The UFC marketed this as a former Olympic judo medalist versus a former boxing world champ. Now two undefeated mixed martial artists competing to see who the best is. The overwhelming majority of fans, fighters, and experts thought this was going to be just another cakewalk for Rousey. 
Holly had two fights in the UFC where she won, but they were both kind of lackluster, versus Rousey, who looked spectacular. However, the boxing credentials of Holly gave this fight a certain appeal, amongst other things. As the fight was approaching, Ronda and Holly both showed nothing but respect towards each other. Then came the weigh-ins. She's the one that put the fist on my face. I didn't touch her. She's the one that touched me, and I told her that fake, that fake sweet act is I see right through it. I really do. It was all fake. All until now. All that respect, all that everything, all you being sweet, I see right now that it's fake, and you're going to get it on Sunday. You're not the first person that thought that you had the perfect plan to beat me. It's not the first time your camp thought that they had the perfect plan to beat me. I'm going to show you on Sunday why I'm the champ. Jesus, talk about a meltdown. Notice how Rhonda was way more pissed off here than she was when Vetch got right up in her face saying don't cry. There's a couple reasons for that. The first was, despite what many had said, Rhonda knew Holly was a legitimate threat. The second was Rousey's ego being challenged. She tried to establish dominance with Holly, and then when she didn't back down, Rhonda lost her shit. What is it about Holly that has set you off today? Well, all I really noticed about her is during the stare downs and during the weigh in, she likes to have her hand on the outside. So I just wanted to place my hand on the outside. That was it. And I could tell that she got really frustrated and liked that and actually put her fist on my face. And I really didn't think that was called for at all. All I wanted to do was have my hand to the outside, and it was already frustrating her. And I really felt like all that sweetness and respect leading up to this point was really fake. And I saw it in that moment, and I'm really shook. I'm going to show her what's up on Sunday, and I'm done with all of this. Holly was frustrated, or you were? Notice how she said that word twice within a few seconds while amped up? You know, like someone who's actually frustrated, reflecting their own insecurities? Insecurity. The truth was that Rhonda got butthurt for not getting her way, and for being unable to intimidate Holly. Then finishes the interview saying, I'm done with all this? Again, who's the one showing frustration here? Remember when Misha tried to establish her dominance with Rhonda in their first face-off? Then lost the title to the person who refused to back down? I actually just put my hand over hers, and so when she reached over right there, it... Yeah. Oh, really? Just happened. And so then when she yeah. pulled with it, it just... You yeah, know, so she smacked herself. Go. Sounds like a rational person's encounter with an irrational one. She's a 19-time boxing world champion, not MMA world champion, and I believe that I'm better than every other girl in every area of MMA. MMA striking is different, and I think I'm the best at it. No amount of strategy and thought can beat me, and I'm going to show them that. I will never allow anyone to hurt me in front of my mother, ever. Touch gloves at this time. Come out ready to do this. Wow, no touch. <laughs> Edmund Tarverdian said he has very much confidence in Ronda's ability to box with Holly Holm. Holly likes to set those hands up and throw kicks behind him. There's a nice. straight left again. Wow, wow. Beautiful. Can she Beautiful. Can. She's hurt. Ronda's in trouble. She's hurt. Hey, oh! Holly looking to finish. He's out. Holly Holm is the new UFC bantamweight champion of the world. Oh my God. That's fucking illegal. Unbelievable. What a performance by Holly Holm. Leave her alone. We got more to do. Poor soul. You were just too high strong. You stupid fucking blabbermouth cunt. I picked a hell of a day to quit drinking. That happened. Fighting's much easier when you're the hammer and not the nail. Rhonda had losses in her judo career, but once she lost in MMA, she took it extremely hard. She spent years identifying as this undefeated champ while projecting a tough exterior and indestructible persona. Her goal was always to remain undefeated, and now that's no longer possible. I want to retire undefeated. I want to be the one dominant athlete that retires undefeated and when they're on top. I'm going to retire undefeated. What are we to expect when someone's mantra is, no one deserves to beat me? What happens to this person once someone does? I'll tell you what, they go into witness protection, but not before appearing on Ellen. Rhonda made headlines during that interview when she briefly thought about ending things for herself before seeing her husband and snapping out of it. Maybe Betch had a point after all. During her hibernation, the division played hot potato with the belt, eventually landing in the hands of Amanda Nunes. Rhonda was obviously deserving of a title shot upon her return, seeing as how she was a longtime champ. After months of searching, Dana finally found a Waldo Rousey. UFC scheduled her versus Nunez at UFC 207. The marketing for the event was exclusively based around Rousey's return, practically ignoring Amanda Nunez. Nobody knew at the time how great Nunez would become. It's clear that the company wanted Ronda to win because she's a pay-per-view draw. Who could blame them? 
There were many questions going into this fight. Did Ronda lose to Holly because she was preoccupied with everything else? Was it just a bad styles matchup? Has the sport passed her by? Is she no longer motivated? Can she bounce back from a devastating loss? I'll let y'all decide which of those questions were answered. It's not like Ronda was there to answer them since she didn't have to do any press. Here we go! Nunez with a big right hand, Mike, and again. by Amanda Nunez. Stunning, <laughs> devastating victory by Nunez. Can I get a refund? She lit Ronda up like a Christmas tree. Uh, you're lucky she even performed for you bastard. You blew it! Now I gotta turn my back. What she did was dirty. I'm a do-nothing bitch. She knows how to move her head. Damn, that couldn't have gone any worse. In hindsight, I'm definitely not picking a prime Ronda to beat a prime Amanda, but that wasn't a prime Ronda. That was her ghost, a shell of her former self. It seemed like as soon as Nunes nailed her with the first heavy shot, it gave her a concussive flashback to the Holly fight. At least Ronda never went down. The only thing that fell that night was her dignity. I think Edmund is a terrible coach, and I will say it publicly. I think he's a terrible coach. I think he hit the lottery when Ronda walked in there. She was winning before she ever met him. She was probably won 99% of the judo matches she ever fought in. She won the Junior Worlds when she was 17. She got a bronze medal in the Olympics. She got a silver medal in the World Championship. She was one of the top athletes in the world when she walked in there. And he wouldn't even give her the time of day for months. Mm -hmm. Somebody like that is a terrible coach. I think she stays there because it's like somebody, you know, pitches a no-hitter when they're wearing red underwear and they wear that red underwear for every day. And I think it's superstition and I would caution anybody from going there. And I think it's bad that he uses her to lure people in. And the reason I tell everybody, and I told Ronda, I'm not going to be quiet about this anymore. He's a bad person and people should not go there. And if he wants to sue me, that's my honest opinion. Sue away. Say what you want about Rhonda, but her mom is gangster. Yeah, okay. I'll agree with you on that one. The Nunes fight ended up being Ronda's last. There have been some rumors of her returning for UFC 300, but I'm not buying it. You saw how she came back from one loss after a year layoff. You think that coming back from two losses after a seven-year layoff is plausible? As it stands right now, that was her last fight. Edmund Tarvidian was Ronda's coach. To his credit, he developed her striking to a certain degree, but it just wasn't anywhere near the level he hyped it up to be. Teaching her such skills as head movement, head movement, and also head movement. Most of Ronda's success with her striking was predicated on having power. Her fundamentals were garbage. I know I have a very unconventional way of striking. A lot of people say that things that I do are wrong when they're really targeted to help me do things that I'm, I'm good at. What Anne Maria said about Edmund was true. He didn't pay attention to Ronda for months after she joined his gym. The coach wouldn't spend any time on me, and I just put it in my head that I was going to force these people to respect me. And so I came in there earlier than any of the guys did, and I left after all the guys were done. I made sure that I was training before them, and I was training after them. And this went on for two months before my, my coach actually did any kind of mitt work with me. The money-hungry Armenian Eddie Munster went on record saying this. She had her first amateur debut after her performance. I went on YouTube just to check it out. And she has 200,000 views. I go, what the hell? That means, you know, a lot of people know this girl already. To me, Edmund always seemed to be a try-hard delusional hothead who pretended to belong when he really didn't. I had Manny fight, what's his name, Aldo. From the corner, uh, I had uh, George working the corner too. He was punching me on my um, shoulder, telling me that I should be in there and I could beat this guy and I believe I could beat him. I would love to see that. Fighters like Travis Brown and Jake Ellenberger's careers went in the toilet after training with him. The guy wasn't only viewed as a shitty coach, but a D-bag as well. Once Ronda stepped away, fighters subsequently left Edmund's stable, causing him to go bankrupt. Your name, please? Edmund Tarverian. Have you filed bankruptcy before? Yes, like a month ago, actually. Are you currently employed? No. When were you last employed? Mm, six years ago, five, six years ago. What was your last employment that you had? A trainer. For what? Martial arts. 
And is there a reason that you have not worked in the last five or six years? No, I'm just trying to get a new fighter, you know, trying to look for fighters. Now, you guys obviously have a very special bond, a relationship that's more like family than coach and fighter. After in a few years or a number of years when she's done with fighting, and maybe even you're done with coaching, are you guys still going to have a relationship? Are you still going to be close? Are you still going to be around each other? Absolutely. I, ha I have no doubt in my mind that we're going to be next to each other, you know, and we're going to know each other till the rest of our lives because uh, this is something special that uh, she has done and I have helped her and been <clears throat> next to her. And she's, she's done great for me. I've, she, if you ask her, she'll say Edna's done great for me also, so. Since her downfall, you've probably seen a lot of revisionist history from people who really don't know what they're talking about. If you're sub to my channel, first off, you have good taste. Second, because of this, I'm not going to allow any of you to self-destruct. Don't repeat false narratives that uneducated casual fans regurgitate in an attempt to sound more knowledgeable than they really are. Trying to win a pissing contest not realizing how weak their stream really is. For instance, when they say stupid shit like, Once Rhonda fought somebody good, she lost. Nerd! Rhonda beat Julia Budd in her fourth MMA fight and Liz Carmouche in her UFC debut both of whom would go on to win Bellator titles. Sarah Kaufman was a former Strikeforce champion who went on to become the Invicta FC champ. Misha Tate was the Strikeforce champ when Ronda beat her and would later go on to win the UFC title from Holly, the person who took it from Ronda. Kat Sangano broke Amanda Nunes and would also beat Misha. This is where the debate becomes fun because most of these dum-dums typically reduce themselves by misusing the term MMA math like a parrot who doesn't understand its meaning. When you talk about a fighter's career, you must discuss their resume. That includes who they have wins against. That's not what MMA math is, you dunce. An example of MMA math would be someone claiming that Misha couldn't beat Holly because she beat Ronda who beat her twice. Or saying that Amanda wouldn't beat Ronda because she lost a cat who Ronda easily destroyed. Therefore, the revisionist history doesn't work against knowledgeable fans who can slice through the bullshit. Now, some of the criticism is completely justified. While Ronda wasn't the one-trick pony some insisted, she wasn't far beyond that. Her judo and transitions to armbar was some of the best the sport has ever seen. Her rudimentary striking was able to get the job done against girls with limited skills on the feet who couldn't handle Ronda's pressure and power. Ronda did have pacing issues and a very limited skill set. If she couldn't steamroll you, she'd fade rapidly. She wasn't known for her kicking game, her double leg takedowns, or any other submission that wasn't an armbar. These criticisms are 100% valid. You're right. Now, I know you didn't think that your boy was going to ignore the elephant in the room that is Chris Cyborg. Good old Vanderlei in a dress was the 145-pound champ when Ronda made her MMA debut. At that time, Ronda was competing at 145. Cyborg would end up failing a drug test, which got her a one-year suspension. Ronda moved down to 135 to take on then-champ Misha Tate. Once Ronda was champion, the talk between her versus Cyborg would be a constant topic, but there would be several hurdles. One was that once the UFC absorbed Strikeforce, Dana only brought the women's 135-pound division into the UFC. Another was Dana and Joe Rogan's previous jokes about Cyborg, where they basically referred to her as a dude. Prompting Cyborg to wind up in Invicta FC. Like it or not, Cyborg's career is full of padded wins against smaller women. That's the unbiased truth. Cyborg was a true 145-er who could not make 135. Yet the overwhelming majority of gals she beat were blown up 135ers, many of whom weren't even top tier 135ers. Is that her fault? Absolutely not, and the lack of depth in the division shouldn't take away from the talent of an individual fighter. Still, you never truly know how great a fighter is unless real competition is constantly put in front of them. Over the years, Ronda and Chris would have a war of words, from Ronda calling Cyborg a cheater to Cyborg telling Ronda that she doesn't want to face her. Many of Ronda's detractors would echo this, but the reality was Ronda had all the leverage. She was the fighter turned celebrity who fought for the UFC in a division that actually existed. Why would she and the UFC ever cater to Cyborg? If that fight was ever going to happen, Cyborg was going to have to meet their stipulations by making 135. Good luck. In light of her testing positive for steroids, 
I think it might be a little more fair to kind of try and get her to fight at 135 because when she's off the steroids, it would be easier for her to cut down to the weight. And if she decides to do some other steroid that's hard to be tested for, then the weight cut would make the you know, doping just as much of a detriment as it would be a help to her. She's uh, definitely not fighting the caliber of fighters that Ronda's fighting right now, and she'd have to fight at 135 pounds. And there's no way you'd bump Ronda up and uh, wait for it. Why? Why would the champ go there? It just doesn't make sense. She's a 135-pound champion here. She's dominant. She's, you know, the champ doesn't chase other people. If you want to fight the champ, you go to the champ. The super fight, unfortunately, never took place, but Cyborg eventually came to the UFC anyway. It just so happened to be after Ronda lost the belt. Nevertheless, knowing what we know about Ronda now, it'd be difficult to pick her against Cyborg. Ronda's wins were more impressive, but if she couldn't outscrap someone who could shrug off her clinch attempts, she was screwed. I mean, it's pretty obvious. That's a huge bitch! Fans once gave Rogan shit for calling Ronda a once-in-a-lifetime fighter, but let's think about that. Was she once-in-a-lifetime in terms of overall fight ability? No! What about in terms of her impact to the sport? You're goddamn right. Lover or hater, Ronda Rousey's legendary career is undeniable. Not only is she the reason that women are in the UFC, but her spectacular fast finishes captured the attention of the masses. In a TikTok generation filled with short attention spans, her constant lightning in a bottle stoppages will probably never be replicated. Ronda was the biggest draw ever in female combat sports. There's not even a close second. She headlined a pay-per-view that sold over a million buys. Very few men do that. There was no denying her influence on society. Her fame surpassed the MMA atmosphere. I want to be the first athlete ever to be to simultaneously have a successful athletic and acting career and by the time that I'm ready to walk away from fighting I want to be able to be at a point where I can act full time. For a while, Rhonda was in several mainstream movies. Then she lost. Apparently Hollywood's as fickle as MMA fans. It's for the best though because they wanted her to play a female Dalton in the Roadhouse remake. So at least we avoided that disaster. Unfortunately, they're still remaking Roadhouse, but Ronda's no longer involved. There were also rumors that she might play Captain Marvel, but they went with Rocky Dennis instead. Disney hilariously managed to hire someone that gets more hate than Ronda does. With every single one of these fights, I could still lose the belt. It doesn't matter how many times you defended it, you lose once and it's gone. All that hard work could be taken away in an instant. Sadly for Rousey, her legacy and public perception dramatically changed based on her last two fights. It wasn't only because she lost. It was how she dealt with those losses. You know there's a problem when you avoid the media to the point where you reach out to Henry Hill asking if he needs a roommate. Once Rhonda realized her image no longer resembled this indestructible monster, her confidence faded like Hamzat's gas tank past the first round. Occasionally, when one door shuts, another one opens. Rhonda may have not become the movie star she aspired to be, but she did become a WWE superstar, capturing multiple titles during her time with the company. In 2018, she was inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame. While Ronda's personality drove many to dislike her, her accomplishments as a combat sports athlete were remarkable. Who cares if Ronda became a do-nothing bitch after claiming not to be? So what if she shows more head movement in interviews than she does in her fights? At least she escaped from coach Count Chocula. Do you really care that she was the only person to ever lose while shadow boxing? Despite what many think, this wasn't her convulsing. You're getting her confused with Bryce Mitchell. Either way, I think enough time has passed for fans to forgive Rhonda. If the Diaz brothers respect her, perhaps you could too. Thank you so much for everyone coming out and the passion and everything. Even the people that booed me, thank you for the noise. The people that cheered me, I like you even more. Thank you. I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong.